Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Stephanie Bergman. And I'm Darren Zito. Welcome to KSN News at 5. Well, today is a big day in the fight over whether you need to prove your citizenship to vote. It is actually the deadline for federal election officials uh, to decide if states, uh, if Kansas requirements should be added to the federal voter registration form. KSN's Ashley Arnold has been following the story. She joins us now live from the newsroom. Ashley? Well, Steph, this has been a hot button issue for months. Should voters have to prove their citizenship to vote? It doesn't look like it's going to be resolved anytime soon as they wait to get information from the elections, uh, excuse me, from the elections citizen, from the... <laughs> from the elections officials, uh, federal elections officials, to decide whether or not this will need to go to court. Secretary of State Chris Kobach has been waiting, as he said, with bated breath to have this determination be made. And then it's really up to them to figure out whether or not we're going to have changes with the federal registration forms and that they will decide to change it and have a requirement of citizenship to be proven in order to vote in the state. Tonight at 6, we'll have the latest on this decision as well as Secretary Kobach's next plan of action. Live in the newsroom, Ashley Arnold, KSN News. All right, thank you, Ashley. We did check on how many new Kansas voters are ready to go to the polls. According to the Secretary of State's office, just under 51,000 Kansans registered to vote and prove their citizenship in the last year. But more than 19,800 people registered to vote but did not have the documents to prove their citizenship. This is the group now in limbo. We'll keep you updated. Federal prosecutors want to shield some evidence in the case of Terry Lowen. Of course, you will remember that he is the man charged with plotting to blow up Mid-Continent Airport last month. They finally asked the court to limit who can see formerly classified information that has been declassified in order to prosecute him. Lowen tried to get what he believed was a car bomb onto the tarmac. Prosecutors say Lowen gave the FBI a statement that encompasses five DVDs. It has already disclosed 948 pages of reports and 636 photographs. We now know that yesterday's big dust storm led to three deaths here in Kansas. They happened during an 11 vehicle pileup near Rexford involving at least six semis. Troopers say visibility was down to zero at that time. A KSN viewer shared this video of the dust storm with us. She says, this was taken just west of Sublette in southwest Kansas. You can tell it's really difficult to see very far ahead at all on the road. Plus, tumbleweeds and other debris fly in front of the car. Gusts yesterday topped 60 miles an hour in some places. Unfortunately, the wind kind of died down yes. today and lots of sunshine today. Maybe things are starting to warm up for the weekend. We hope. Jamie Travers is in the Pinpoint Weather Center with more on that. Yeah, today was much better, not nearly as windy as yesterday, and even temperatures not too bad either. At this hour, still lots of 50s on the map in western Kansas, 52 in Colby, Garden City, 54 in Liberal. As you move further towards the east, though, that's where we see chillier weather there. We're looking at the 40s or lower 40s for central and eastern Kansas right now. 40 degrees on the dot in Wichita, with a little bit of a breeze feeling just a few degrees cooler than that. Now, your first forecast throughout your evening, really not terrible for this time of year. We'll have clear skies at 6 p.m. 38 degrees so starting to get even more chilly then by 8 p.m. a bit colder 35 degrees also some higher clouds moving through the area and then 10 p.m. partly cloudy 34 so not quite yet to that freezing mark although we are going to drop down below freezing into the 20s tonight but we have a beautiful weekend ahead of us which we will take a very close look at coming up in just a little bit see you then thank you well, a pivotal moment in the civil rights movement that played out in Wichita more than 50 years ago will be remembered on Martin Luther King Day. Event organizers will include the men and women of the 1958 Dockham sit-in. 92-year-old Rosie Hughes was on the Youth Council and still lives here in Wichita. Her group boldly took over the Dockham drugstore. The owner finally gave in, allowing the group to be served. It was a tremendous victory, only recognized, though, by an African-American newspaper. Hughes is proud their story has not been forgotten. Nobody won, you know.